Nigeria. Fortunately, the commercial break took up our extra time, meaning that I must tender an apology to you saying, well, commercials have to play. And that took <laughs> us to the moment color shows up. So, my <laughs> friends, Lords of Logic next week, Thursday. Miss it for nothing. We're 99.3 Nigeria Info. My name's Joyce. You're on the sunny side, and Carla's here. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, Lagos. Thank you, Joyce, for the beautiful introduction, as yeah. usual. Yeah. And once again, welcome to 99.3 Nigeria Info. My name is, as Joyce said, Carla, and I will be your health coach again this week for the coming next hour. So, Let's go straight to the topic. It's a continuation of the past two weeks. And once again, more about your mental health. And I will repeat it again and again and again. Do not underestimate the power of your mind. The power of your mind. Life is all about choices you make. And today we are about the right choices for you in order to find happiness and content in your life. So today is the last episode on finding happiness. So a quick recap on the past points we mentioned for the past two weeks. And then we finish off with more points more tips and after that of course we take your calls 0700 and for all you females out there 0146571190 and there's always whatsapp 0809597805 i do apologize if i don't get to read all your messages live during the show but i will definitely read them so the few points we mentioned last week we spoke of removing negative information such as uh, negativity in news or even social media usage we spoke of how we've become more of a using it more of a passive surveillance tool social surveillance tool instead of actually really connecting with people and um, we also spoke of in I mean, whenever possible, removing negative people when it comes to negativity, not just negative environments or negative triggers. And finally, we spoke of removing the bottom 20% from your life. That's why it is very important that you do what we call the 80-20 analysis and ask yourselves the two main questions once again. What are the 20% of things in your life that cause 80% of your unhappiness? And what are the 20% of things in your life that cause 80% of your happiness? So basically, the, the, the bottom line of it all was less is more. Deducting is sometimes better than adding when it comes to finding happiness. And today it's all about the deduction. So next on the list, we have removing the desire to prove yourself. Removing the desire to prove yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having a big, ambitious goal. But didn't you ever notice that many people pursue like those, look at me, look at me, I'm the perfect person type of goal in order to prove something to others and more importantly to themselves. And they tend to care so much about what people think about them and they also care about proving their self-worth. So it's more about looking for validation. They need to show uh, that they're at a certain level of validation in their existence. So once again, think about it. Is it really worth it? And this can at many times take you further away from happiness because the need to be perfect tends to lead to depression, to anxiety and to burnout. And once again, if you think about the standard of perfection, if you can define it, what's perfection? Because my definition of perfection might be totally different than yours, might be totally different than Joyce's. Why is it so the so-called standard that we can realistically never really attain because our definition of perfection always changes throughout life? I mean, my my definition of perfection maybe 10 years ago is so totally different than what it is today. Through my experiences, through my mistakes, through the victories I've had, it, it changes, you know, and who we are as a person is constant. There's no level of achievement that will make you or me more worthy as a person. So now, of course, you can and you should always look to work on yourself. I'm not saying no, you can improve your communication skills, be more tolerant to others, be kinder, be patient, of course, be less just judgmental. I mean, these are all personal developments and these are a must, definitely. But do they really make you in that sense achieve the standard of a perfect person does it mean you were worse of a person before you learned those skills or that you're better now that people you know you're better than people who don't actually do those personal development skills so once again eliminate this tendency to prove yourself and just ask 
if you could never tell a single soul, a single person about your achievement, your goal, would you still pursue that goal? And that's where you start thinking, hmm, is it really something I want to do for myself? If your journey of self-improvement doesn't make you a better person, would you still do it? That's what you should also ask yourself. So do things purely for enjoyment and love. Do not prove yourself, uh, not to prove yourself or to prove of that perfect image you're trying to give out. And this will make it a lot easier for you to find happiness. Definitely. I can guarantee you that. I don't know, Joyce, do you agree with me on to that? To be honest with you, I'm waiting for you to finish because I have a question. Go ahead. Should I ask the question? Should I ask? Yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay, so um, from what you're saying... I hope I have the answer, though. <laughs> I, I, I think you do. Yeah. It might just have been like an omission on your part. Mm. From what you're saying, there's a precursor. The, cu- the precursor is that there is a problem that leads to people wanting, or say there's a void. I don't know if it's a problem. Of course. No, that leads it to is people a void. wanting to prove themselves. And so I'm listening validation, to Carla. Validation. Yeah, Many but, people but seek something and is look making for me, that. So let's assume I want to prove mm. myself. There's something that I am trying, there's a reason I'm trying to prove myself. Mm. So that the validation, in my opinion, by hearing you, is more like um, an effect of something. So what's the cause? There are many things. It could be you were ignored as a child and you want to show yourself out there. It could be that you are lacking affection. It could be that you have this sense of competition and you think that image is what... It's, there's so many reasons out there, Joyce. And, and, and I think I'm going to have to ask you to tell mm. us how we can fix a few because... Mm. I mean, you're giving us medicine. Definitely. And one question is, would you ever, if that achievement you want to do, if you shouldn't show it off to anyone or tell a single soul about it, would you still do it? Very good question. And if you wouldn't do it because you know you won't be able to share it with anyone or post it or whatever, then that's not really what makes you happy. What makes you happy is something that you should be doing for yourself, something that you enjoy doing. Um, I know of many people who are so workaholic, but and they love what they're doing. Don't get me wrong, but they're unhappy. Yeah. They just feel that they're not getting enough because for them, their focus is, and that's my next point. Remove your attach attachment, their goal. If I get to this goal, I'll be happy. If I do this mus- much money, I will be happy. If, okay, if I'm healthy, I'll be happy. But then again, it's not enough to just be healthy. Some people believe they can't be happy until they have certain things. And most of the time it is As I said, you know, money or anything else, relationship, possessions. And that does not hold up. When you achieve something and feel happy, you will quickly adapt. So whatever it is, a goal you have in in mind. And then eventually you will lose that happiness and start looking for something else. Then something else. And that explains it. You have so many people who are out there famous and you wonder why they're depressed. They have everything they need. Or it, is, it appears they have everything. It appears. But then but again, they, you see that this one was molested or this one had, uh, was, I don't know, missing affection from his parents. Or th- There's always uh, something that needs to be fixed before you start saying, I want this to be happy. Yes. So happiness is not a goal. It's a journey. You have to find happiness first. And once you find that happiness, then you start setting your goals. I want to achieve this and that. Because... You can't be happy if you can't, I mean, if you can't be happy without those things, then you can't be happy with them. Once again, don't interpret me the wrong way. That's not to say that you should never try to achieve anything in life. In the contrary, ambitions are what drive you. But try to reach those goals without making your happiness depend on them, without attaching your happiness to them. It creates more freedom, more ease, more peace. Basically, instead of saying, when I do this, I will be happy, don't, because when you get there and you do it, you might be happy a year, two years, maybe less even, and then realize there's something missing. I need to go somewhere else. So I don't know if it's clear enough. It's very debatable. Yeah. This I can say. I mean, yeah. Some people might see this differently. What do you think, Joyce? The more you speak, the more I have more questions. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sure everybody has questions. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, this is, if you have a question for Carla, I'm just chancing you, you know, as someone who's in the studio, you can call in and ask her uh, your your question. So, Carla, like, so now you have addressed the issue of the precursor. Now, there is something else that arises. We're in the age of social media. Mm-hmm. And today, I can tell you for free that happiness is also followers, likes, retweets, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And it's unfortunate because so... Because once these are gone, you are going to be depressed. Yeah. You are going to feel down. So is it really worth... These Are these really things you need to attach your happiness to? 
Can't you find happiness without needing to prove yourself in life? That's the thing. Yeah. We live in such a world where we need to prove ourselves. We yeah. need to show. Yeah, But if you think about it, the happiest people on earth don't have Instagram, don't have Facebook. 100. They live the simplest minimalistic life. And I can tell you for a fact, it's a fact. The less they have, the more they're happy because they're less, at they're attaching their happiness. It's easier said than done. I'm not saying, you know, go, go offline and, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, be a guru somewhere. No, but I'm just saying, thinking that if you get rich, you are going to be happy is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Don't attach your happiness to something you need to get or possess. So you're saying contentment. Yeah, because it's, that's it. Finding contentment is very difficult for many people Absolutely. because most of us compare. We always compare. Finding con and that's the word you you just hit the the the, yeah. the target. It's contentment. So the, what are the takeaways before we open the lines? First of all, negative information can cause a lot of stress and depression. So take action by cutting out either the news or limiting social media use if you really feel it has a big influence on you. Number two, the 80-20 rule, which as I said, the 20% of things that cause 80% of your unhappiness, get rid of them if you can. Number three, the relationships are the biggest factor for your health and well-being. So use the 80-20 rule on that as well, if you can, specifically when it comes to social circles and create boundaries maybe if you can not eliminate them but try creating boundaries then you have stop trying to be perfect and stop trying to prove yourself as worthy do more things for yourself and keep more announcements for yourself and not for others and finally stop attaching your happiness to your achievements to your goals to your possessions i'm not saying you won't be happy once you get there but that happiness might not be permanent you might want eventually to do something else and something so Be happy, and while you're happy, get to your goals. And this is even, wow, beyond your imagination how you can feel. 0700-993-993-993. The lines are open. I am here to listen. We do have some time. All right. Hello. Hello, Dr. Killa. Hi, Carla. Carla. Hi, no, hi good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, Carla. Carla. Yeah. Okay, Carla. Okay. <laughs> Okay, my, my name ahead. is Chibiki. I'm calling from Suleri. Hi, Chibiki. How, go ahead. Okay, I, I just want to buttress what you've said. You know, um, I want people to understand that you are even good enough before people tell you that you are good enough. Thank you. It's very You know? Mm. Yes. Yeah, you, are, you, are, you are a complete person, even without a spouse, without anything. Like, like you've said, a lot of people attach their happiness to so many things, to marriages, I've, I've seen a lot. Of, I've seen a, a young girl that said, "Ah, if I don't get, if I don't have a boyfriend, I won't be happy." Wow. Which is very, very wrong. Or if I don't have a husband, I won't be. I can never be happy yeah. with my life. Yeah, it's don't very, see. very wrong. It's a very wrong mentality. Very much so. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. So, Thank so, so, so people, people have to change their mindsets. Mm -hmm. They should understand that happiness is something that is within you it's is is an inner thing it's not something you get from outside it's right there in front of you you just need to find it and look at it and believe in yourself definitely thanks for sharing hello wow please reduce the volume my ears are going to explode wow are you in traffic hello hello are yes. you in this bush? hello how are you go ahead okay i have a question for you Yes. Okay. You see, the issue of uh, happiness. Don't you think a man can never have be happy as long as say there is a law of hierarchy of needs? What do I mean? You know, the least demand that remains unsatisfying will always motivate an individual. Like for instance, you need a house. The moment you have a house, there will be another least demand. Mm -hmm. So, with that least demand, do you think a man can ever be happy? Yes, I mean, with demands, right? He's saying without these demands. Repeat your question. No, no, What's your I, question? Did I got it? it. Without these demands, if we... I mean, yes, you, it's, there's nothing wrong no, let with... Me, uh, I said, you are talking of happiness. Yes. Funny happiness. Yes. I said, uh, do you think a human being can have happiness as long as there is hierarchy of needs? Which okay. goes to the issue of uh, yeah. least demand. That is, you know that the least demand that remains unsatisfied always mm. motivates an individual. Wow. Yeah, so, very clear. Uh, if you are looking for a house, the mm. moment you have a house, you will be thinking of how do you furnish it? Yeah. And you furnish it. So, yeah. as long as there is a continual list demand, 
a man will never have happiness. All right. Yeah, so but thank that's you. but that's um, really true. And I mean, you can see from so many people out there, gurus, I guess. But we don't all want to be gurus. But I'm just saying, it exists. Some people, it's all a mindset. Thinking of what you need more than what you want and being grateful and content about it is really, I think, for me, primal, as they say. I don't know. It's, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. really the, the what you should be thinking. More than I want, I want, I want. I have what I need. Thank you. And from there, you start working on yourself. There's so many books out there that can help you and drive you through that path. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Sorry about that. We have issues with the lines today. Hello. Finding happiness. Hello. All right. Hi, 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 hi. So, Carla. Oh, somebody's on the line. Hello. Yes, hi. Yeah, yeah, this is Smile on the line. Hi, how are you? Go ahead. I, I'm fine. So, um, I I just want to contribute to what um, the topic of today. Please do. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, the, the, the truth of the matter is that a lot of, because of human insatiable nature, mm-hmm. you know, they, they tend to always be unhappy because they always want more, mm-hmm. you know. Like, like the last caller said, uh, when you have a house, you also want to furnish it, you know? That, Dr. Carla, are you still there? Yes, Carla, no doctor. Okay. Yes, uh-huh. I'm here. So when you have a house, you want to furnish, you, you want to furnish that house, and uh, like you, you, you get a car today. Mm. After you've bought a car, mm. you're also looking forward to get something else, you know, something bigger. So such things bring yeah, happiness. Sorry, I'm yeah. going to interrupt. Does looking forward mean that you're going to attach your happiness to that thing? I look forward to meeting no, no, someone. No. But if I don't, or I look forward to getting yes. my own flat yes. one day. Yes. But if I don't, will this make me unhappy? That's the question. If it exactly. will, then that's, that's a problem. Ex- you yeah, should exactly. be happy before saying. attaching yourself to such possessions. Yeah, exactly. That's what mm. I'm saying. So people should learn to detach themselves exactly. from these things. Exactly. You understand? That's my point. You yes, understand? thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. All right. Thanks for calling. Hello. Hello, Dr. I Hello, mean, Carla. <laughs> one thing I want to say is this. Um, one, this is Moses calling from Hi, America. Moses. Go ahead. First, what can make people happy? First, you have to, like... See yourself and think of your own health first and your love for God. And first, be content. Mm. You see, contentment can make someone happy. Very true. You understand? You don't have something does not mean you should not be happy. You know, one day, actually, there was a time I always look at Timbaland. You know Timbaland, when people wear it, I'll just look at it, I'll laugh, and I'll be doing my hard work and i'll say one day i wear this shoe one day i wear this shoe i wore it now nah, i don't even have i don't i don't tire for this shoe. <laughs> you see you got it that's it that's so, it you don't there's always something your else happiness to exactly. what you don't have you're you're very don't correct. have that mindset that one day if possible you may make it but don't put your happiness there 100 percent. i agree with you thank you for sharing thank you Wow, I mean, I'm I'm glad everybody gets it. It's just applying it for so many people is sometimes quite a very far-fetched task. But um, really, it's the only person stopping you from your happiness is yourself at times. Hello, Doctor Carla. Carla, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is my calling back. I there's something I missed. Yeah. Go ahead. Go so, ahead. So, um, another thing again is if if people want to be happy. Mm-hmm. They also have to be, they, sh- they should also have a positive mindset Definitely. about life. Yes. You understand? It starts, it starts within, you know. Mm. You should have a, a positive world view. For example, if you are the type that always thinks that life, that is a dog-eat-dog dog world, mm. you would always have this negative mindset. Mm. And it's negativity that you see all around you. But if you have this positive perception about life, mm. Dr. Kala, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, so if you have this positive perception about life, you know, mm. try to stay close to things that are more, surround yourself with more positive people than negative people. 
That's one of you the know, things we mentioned. Yes, exactly. than toxic people. You know, mm. surround yourself with things that make you glad that you're alive. Definitely. Things that makes you happy. Get more you know? positivity in your things life. you love. Yes, God bless you. Things that you love. And you know? now that you're mentioning you that, to. you just said we're deducting. Sometimes it's not about adding. It's about yeah. deducting, and deducting the yes, negativity yes. is really and important. A, and again, and again, another thing again is you you have to make others happy, because whatever you project out there is what you get back. Very true. You know, yeah, the law of cause and effect. You understand? Karma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but so when you true. make others you happy, forward. in return, you are making yourself happy automatically. Definitely. That's very true. By the way, there was a study that showed that when you do a lot of charity, it kind of gives you some good sense of happiness as well when you see that you've done good to other people and you see the joy in their lives thanks to you that really is fulfilling hello, hello. good afternoon all right i think i'm going to take maybe two more calls hello good afternoon yeah good afternoon ma'am. yes go ahead okay good afternoon my name is Nathaniel. Yes. Only from um, Lekki. Yes, go ahead. Um, I, my take on that topic is that um, the happiness in in court has been defined by our society to a, a large extent. That mm-hmm. people believe that uh, the way the society believes mm. that the, uh, happiness comes or have the money mm. and the material resources. Mm. This has actually made a lot of people to believe that uh, without the material attachment and finance that's true. or the wealth, you cannot be happy. And that is responsible for why so many people are not happy. Yeah. But I think it shouldn't be like that. Like you said earlier, that the most happiest people are the set of people who live just ordinary life uh, or the malicious uh, kind of uh, mm. life. So I think yeah. our society should start having a change of mind towards what makes them happy and what the true source of happiness is all about. Definitely. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much uh, for Dr. sharing. Kola. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we take one more, Joyce? Well, you have a minute. All right. So one more. Squeeze, uh... Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Yeah. My name is Kola. Yes, Kola. You have 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. I've been, I've been depressed for some time now. Mm. And I've been the, 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 that make me not to go to work, do anything. I was just, I'm just at home like one year now, wow. so I don't know how to come over it. You know, I just want to be happy with myself. Mm. I don't know what you can advise me on doing. All right, Kola, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to cut you off. I wish I could help you with that, but I think you're gonna maybe need to seek counseling or talk to someone, a friend, family member, and take it from there. Baby steps, surely but surely, but definitely you need help. You need someone to, I mean, accept the help if you can get any. Sorry, we have to cut it short. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next week on a brand new topic on the Health Station. All right, guys, the sun sets here. My work is done. Bless you. Have a great weekend until next Monday. Yeah, we're 99.3. This is Nigeria Info. Bye-bye. You're listening to Confession Thursday. This is the sunny side. My name is Joyce.